You better be ready, it's coming for you. A monster is lurking, and when this is through, one soul will survive. It's coming for you. G'day guys, welcome back to Snuff, where we discuss everything about the greatest game on television, Survivor. The cast for Survivor 41 has officially been revealed, so today I'll be giving my thoughts on what we know so far, and having a little bit of fun with it by conducting a Brant Steel simulation for this season's Castaways. Before we jump into the cast, I've previously gone in depth discussing all the twists we know about so far, including the 26 day season, no fire tokens, no tribe swaps, the lack of reward challenges and flint, return of exile island, and tribal summit. If you haven't already checked it out, go ahead and watch it in the top right corner, of your screen. Of course, as Jeff Probst has hinted at time and time again, this is going to be a monster of a season, premiering on September 22nd, and I'm sure just like me, you're all extremely excited to have Survivor back on our screens, finally, after an 18 month long wait. With the new 26 day season, this will be extremely fast paced and ushering a new era of the show, which I'm interested to see take shape. We've received small videos from all 18 castaways courtesy of Entertainment Weekly and CBS and we'll start out by taking a look at the members of the Luvu tribe. First up we have Danny McRae, a retired NFL player, 33 years of age from Frisco, Texas and when I look at Danny immediately I get Alan Ball vibes. I'm looking at him thinking he's going to be a massive challenge beast, obviously he used to play for the Dallas Cowboys in the NFL and in his cast assessment he does say he wants to take a back against the wall mentality. He's inspired by Ben Drebergen, recognising it'll be a massive target but he needs to do whatever it takes to get out of that. Also something I picked up from his cast bio that I found really interesting is the fact he has his MBA. After retiring from the NFL he decided to go back to university and get a degree which is something I take my hat off to him for so he certainly knows how to persist through challenges and has some wits about him that'll be really interesting to see how he plays out that balance between being a former NFL player and having his NBA. Deshaun Radden from Arizona, he's 26 years of age and a medical student. He comes across as a triple threat, strong in the social department, the strategy department and the physical department. He says that people aren't going to recognize just how much of a strategic player he is until it's too late and I love to see this. I'm really getting Jamal Shipman vibes here. I think he's very self-aware of what he's putting off uh, and he can also compete very well in challenges. Looking at this Luvu tribe as a whole, I think they're going to be the dominant force in the pre-merge stage of the game in terms of winning a lot of challenges and Deshaun, um, especially when you put him against someone like Danny, I think those two are going to be really strong members for the tribe. Deshaun, I think, has a lot more of the social awareness as opposed to Danny, and I think he will do really well. In fact, he's probably one of my early winner picks at this stage, just based off what we're seeing. We also have Eric Kasponen, 32 years old from Toronto, Ontario, one of two Canadians on this cast. She is a communications manager, and I'm sure she'll come into the game playing a very social game. She says that no one will see her coming, and we'll just have to wait and see, comparing herself to Brenda Lowe on the outside, because she's physically strong and socially aware, but saying she's actually Todd Herzog underneath. So it's going to be very interesting to see how she sort of manipulates the game, whether she can manipulate people find a strong alliance and really play that strong social and strategic game and, and be underestimated similar to a Todd Herzog. Next up we have Heather Aldrett, 52 years old from Charleston, South Carolina. She's a stay-at-home mum and she's going to be extremely underestimated as one of the older members of the cast. It will be really interesting to see how she adapts to the game. She likens herself to Lisa Welchel, which again, when, when I saw her when I saw her photo and her cast bio straight away, I was getting major Lisa Welchel vibes. I think if she finds herself in the right alliance, she could ride that all the way to the end and potentially have a strong alliance going into final tribal council. Will she have the strategic chops that we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but she also compares herself to Chrissy Hoffbeck in terms of her savviness and Lisa Welchel in terms of her kindness. So, so to see if she can take on that role of the older player, the motherly, more nurturing player, and avoid being the first boot on her tribe. Riding that all the way out to the end will be really interesting to see how she goes there. I'm getting such good vibes from this next contestant. It's Nasir Mutalif, 
36 years old from California. He emigrated to the United States from Sri Lanka growing up there and he's used to poor conditions. He's used to living on an island without running water. He is a sales manager and he actually learned English through watching Survivor with his wife and immediately I'm getting major Tai Trang vibes. This guy just comes off as larger than life. He looks like so much fun. He's going to be someone that everyone drifts towards naturally. And I think you can use that social capital to ride it all the way out to the end. Probably one of my early season favorites already, Sydney Seagal, 26 years old from Brooklyn, New York. She's a law student and she is bloody confident. She says she's a jack of all trades and that's exactly what she needs to win the game of Survivor. I'm getting major poverty vibes. She comes across as a massive flirt. She's extremely confident and also looks like she'll be very physical in challenges, which is going to be something that's great to see. She says she's going to tone down her amazingness and it'll certainly be interesting to see how that sort of cockiness and confidence translates in the game of Survivor. But she does want to play an organic game. She wants to lay the social foundations in the pre-merge before then developing a strategy later in the game, which I think is a great strategy to have. Something I found interesting from looking at her cast bio was she compared herself to Natalie White, the winner of Survivor Samoa, which I find quite interesting because Natalie White is someone you don't always see spoken about and in fact she doesn't really get a good rap. But certainly uh, I think Sydney wants to position herself as someone that plays a very strong social game and is underestimated and can ride that all the way out to the end. Of course, on the topic of Natalie White, if you haven't already, I just did a video on her journey to Soul Survivor in Survivor Samoa. I'll pop that in the top right hand corner of your screen right now. Moving over to the Ua tribe, we have another six castaways and we're starting out with the first ever contestant from the great state of Wyoming. It's cattle rancher, 49 years old, Brad Reese. He says he's adaptable and flexible and as a cattle rancher, he's got all the chops it takes to succeed in the game. He always lives off the land. He's flexible in many different trades, but he says he's also got the social skills to exhibit that. He likens himself to Boston Rob, and purely off looks, I'm getting major Peter Harkey vibes, but certainly if he can ingratiate himself well with his tribe, he can do a great job. I see him being really a, a, a great leader for the tribe. Jeannie Chen is 46 years old from Portland, Oregon. She's a grocery clerk and I'm sure she will emerge as a major fan favorite. She seems like such a fun character. She said she's born to play this game and she's a real hard worker. And I'm getting major Elaine Stott vibes here. I think she's gonna be someone that's really underestimated in the game and people look to her as sort of the comic relief, someone that everyone can get along with and it is a lot of fun around the tribe. She might emerge as a major threat because she's so well liked towards the end that she maybe gets sniped out late in the game. But certainly interested to see how Genie adapts to this game. And another contestant I'm really excited for, after seeing his bio and his videos, I'm actually getting a lot better vibes from him. And that's J. Ross Robinson, 20 years old, from Oklahoma City. He's a college student and, of course, He's younger than the game of Survivor itself, and I'm sure we'll be seeing that mentioned by Jeff Probst many times. He's not the only one younger than the show itself, but he is a military boy. He grew up in Micronesia and has been all around the country, which means he's always got to adapt. He's always got to learn how to adapt in new social situations and make new friends. I think that's going to be something that's really useful in this season. And for me, JD is reminding me a lot of Malcolm Freeberg, obviously Malcolm Freeberg as well grew up in Micronesia, but I think uh, JD will be a very physical competitor, someone that's underestimated, especially when compared to the likes of, you know, Danny McRae and to Sean Ratton, who will probably be viewed as the bigger guys on the tribe who are more physically driven, but I really like his comparisons here. He compares himself to a mixture of poverty in terms of his charm, Fabio in terms of the fact that he will be extremely underestimated. Fabio, one of my favorite winners, so whenever his name comes up, I certainly pay attention and Jeremy Collins as well he says he's going to implement his shield management which I think is going to be very interesting to see and looking at this Ua tribe I think someone he might want to keep close to him in order to get far in the game is the next contestant Ricard Foy 31 years old from Cedra Woolley Washington he's a flight attendant and straight away my radar is going off I think he's going to carry on the legacy of Todd Herzog I think Ricard Foy is going to be my winner pick for this season already 
And that is because he's hyper aware. He knows what he's giving off and he knows how to read body language as he's hard of hearing something I can relate with. Certainly with Ricard, I think he's going to be a very bubbly character, someone that everyone drifts towards and is well liked by the tribe. And I also think he'll add a lot of strategy to that. I don't think people will see him coming and there appear to be a lot harder game players, a lot harder physical contestants that I think Ricard's sort of going to blend into the middle very similar to Todd Herzog and really underestimate everyone, have that strong alliance around him so that he's able to carry himself all the way to the end. It's going to be really interesting to see how he plays his game out. Up next, we got Sarah Wilson, 23 years old from Sherman Oaks, California. She's a healthcare consultant and she comes across immediately as being very athletic. She's got great people skills. She compares herself to Kim Spradlin, which will be really interesting to see, obviously, obviously one of the younger females on this tribe. It'll be interesting to see who she sort of gravitates towards. I can see her gravitating towards the likes of JD, Ricard, and Chantel, and maybe forming an alliance there. One thing that I'm really excited to see, though, is she attended MIT, and I think she'll be very underestimated if she doesn't let that fact out. I think people won't be aware of just how socially capable she truly is. And Chantel Smith is someone that is going to be very social. She's a pastor and a comedian. Again, another contestant from Toronto, Ontario. She's 34 years old and no doubt those skills as a pastor will translate to people skills. She knows how to relate with others. She knows how to get information out of others, which is going to be really fascinating to see. She's willing to put up with the pain and suffering, endurance, and she'll persevere throughout the game. I think she's going to be someone that's a really, really strong contestant and probably one of my favorite female castaways so far, just based off what we're seeing in the preseason. And finally, rounding out the Season 41 cast, we have the Yasser Tribe. First up, we've got David Vocci, 34 years old from Nashville, Tennessee. He's a neurosurgeon and straight away, I don't know why it is, but I'm getting David Sampson vibes. I hope he does a lot better than David Sampson did in Cagayan. Obviously, David Sampson being the first boot on that season as the owner of the Miami Marlins, but he seems to have his strategy set out from day one. He's ready to go. He's going to run the game from beginning to end. I'm not sure how that will work, although having a 26-day season, it might benefit him having that short ability in the game to start playing from day one and run all the way out for four weeks. Certainly, it may work in his benefit now that the season is a lot shorter. I liken him to David Sampson, as I said. Also, someone like Spencer Bledsoe as well. Sort of a mold uh, as that sort of brainy Kagoyan archetype. It's going to be really interesting to see. I think he's either going to go very early in the game or make it very late in the game. Eric Abraham is 50 years old from San Antonio, Texas. He's a cybersecurity analyst and he is giving off such good vibes. He's excited to go. He's cheerful, he's happy-go-lucky, he's confident. I'm really keen to see how he goes, how he relates to the people on his tribe. I do view Yasser as being a little bit of a train wreck tribe, so it'll be interesting to see how that sort of goes there. But Abraham mentions that he's going to play a hybrid game between Richard Hatch and Wendell Holland with a touch of Boston Rob. Certainly Wendell Holland is someone that's come up a lot amongst this cast. But the mention of Richard Hatch really interests me. So I'm going to be interested to see, you know, how much of Richard Hatch's game he actually translates across. Is he going to play a very cocky, arrogant game? Is he going to sit there and try and dictate the alliance? How is he going to play this off? It's going to be very interesting to see. And Abraham is one I've got my eyes set on. Evie Jagoda is another one who has really stood out in the preseason. She's a PhD student, 28 years old, from Massachusetts. She's got the smarts and she's got the social skills. She studies human evolution, which is going to be a very interesting field of study to adapt into the game, to see how she connects with people on an individual level and emotionally is going to be fascinating. She wants to stay close to the center of power and I really liked her analysis here. She's clearly a super fan of Survivor she was mentioning how Todd Herzog aligned himself early in the game with Aaron Reisberger, having that shield, someone in front of him, and using that as a way to deflect off himself and put the strategy onto someone else. He mentioned again, Stephen Fishback and JT Thomas, Kim Spradlin and her alliance with Chelsea and Sabrina, having those people around you that you can cut early on and not take them to the final tribal council. So if there's someone that looks more dominating than you, you might as well cut them early 
and then make it all the way to final tribal council. If she can implement that strategy, it's going to be very fascinating. I'm not sure how far Evie is going to go, just because, as I said, I think Yasser is going to be the train wreck tribe here, and I, I'd imagine they're going to go to a couple of tribal councils, just based off looking at the physical strength of some of these other tribes. I don't hold high hopes for Yasa, but certainly if she can go deep in the game and implement that strategy that she wants to, it'll be fascinating to see how she goes. Again, another castaway who's younger than the game of Survivor itself, it's Liana Wallace. She's 20 years old from Georgetown University. She's a college student and she comes across as being very authentic. One thing I picked up on here is she's a spoken word poet and straight away my mind went to Survivor South Pacific with Sam Hart to DC, Sam Hart obviously being the first boot on that season. It seems as though that Liana is a little bit more cool, calm and confident than Sam Hart. Sam Hart had a couple of screws loose in her brain there but Liana seems to come across as a lot more cooler and I think being a young castaway she's going to probably drift towards someone like Xander, who we'll discuss later. Um, again, I can see herself aligning herself with Evie. It's going to be really interesting to see how social dynamics play out here, and I think a major part of that will be Tiffany Seely, who's 47, from New York. She is a teacher. She says she's a combination of Aussie, Colby, and Parvati. It's going to be interesting to see. I certainly look at her and think straight away a Ream Daily type character. And that might alarm some people, but I look at her as being similar to Reem in the sense that she comes across as someone that's very confident, obviously an older woman. I don't think she's going to be as bombastic and crazy and frustrated as Reem was. Reem was obviously a great character, but I certainly think she's going to take on that motherly role within the tribe and it's going to be fascinating to see. She says she's patient and experienced, so certainly it'll be a test for her to see who she aligns with in this game. Finally, we have our final castaway, and it is Xander Hastings. He's 20 years old from Jacksonville, Florida. He's an app developer, and he says he's unrelenting. He's got so much heart and so much passion. Something I picked up on here, he is a cross-country runner, which means if he gets to that individual stage of the game, he's going to be a great endurance castaway in a lot of those challenges. Will that put a target on him? I think yes. If he gets in the game with someone like a JD, I could possibly see Xander being used as sort of that meat shield strategy for someone like JD or even Evie on his original on his original Yasa tribe. Will those two align and Evie will use Xander as a meat shield? Potentially, we'll have to wait and see. I'm getting Jack nicked in vibes. I think someone that's young, inexperienced, not knowing too much outside of his own bubble. It's going to be interesting to see who Xander aligns with on this Yasa tribe. As I said, I think they're going to be a little bit chaotic and we might see them go to a couple of tribal councils early on. So there you have it, 18 castaways all ready to battle it out for the title of Soul Survivor. I figured we might as well have some fun by throwing all 18 castaways into a brand steel simulation, so let's get it underway. So here we have it, we've loaded all three tribes, all 18 castaways, into Brant still right here. I'm using Survivor Co Wrong as a base for this, but on the Luvu tribe we've got Danny McRae, Dayshawn Radden, Erica Kaspunin, Heather Aldrich, Nasir Mutalif, Sydney Segal. On the Ua tribe it's Brad Reese, Jeannie Chen, JD Robinson, Ricard Foy, Sarah Wilson, and Chantel Smith. And finally on the Yasser tribe it's David Vocci, Eric Abraham, Evie Jagoda, Liana Wallace. Tiffany Seely and Xander Hastings. So let's get right into this and straight away we're going to see on the Luvu tribe an alliance forming between Danny and Deshaun. I mentioned I think those two are going to be two that really align. Sydney as well, someone that's very physical. So I can see this actually happening in the game. Heather Aldra is an interesting one and I think with Heather it's going to be really funny to see how she adapts, who she aligns herself with early on in the tribe. Over to the Ua tribe, straight away we've got Brad Reese and Chantel Smith aligning. Very interesting alliance because it almost seems like they come from two different worlds. Um, but, but certainly maybe that bond between God will be something that forges them together. And the other alliance being Jeannie Chen, JD Robinson, Ricard Foy and Sarah Wilson. As I said, I think JD Robinson and Sarah Wilson will probably gravitate towards each other being two of the younger players on this tribe. Ricard Foy, someone who is very fun to be around and Jeannie Chen again someone very fun I, I think she's going to be well liked amongst the tribe so again I, I think these alliances here could be something we see similar play out in the show 
on the Yasser tribe, David Vocci, Eric Abraham, and Avi Jagoda having a strong alliance early on, and Tiffany Seely and Xander Hastings as well. Very interesting to see Tiffany and Xander aligning early in the game. Uh, certainly if Tiffany plays that sort of nurturing motherly role, I could see this being something that happens, but looking at David and Abraham, yes, I see that relationship happening, and maybe Evie potentially has those two as sort of her meat shields, the people that she's keeping in front of her to shift the blame off of herself. Heading into the immunity challenge here, we see that Luvu tribe win immunity, they win a fire making twist, and the Yua tribe win immunity as well, which will send Yasa to the first tribal council. As I said, Yasa is going to be a train wreck and it seems it's going to play out here just the same in this simulation. They also win Flint, as we know, on this season. There'll only be one Flint circulating between all three tribes and that will go around every single immunity challenge. Every time someone loses, they've got to hand up the Flint. It's going to be very fascinating to see. Okay, on the Lumu tribe, straight away we've got Nasir Fund and the Idol. As I said in my assessment, Tai Trang is someone I look towards him. And, you know, uh, again, I think this is going to be a very interesting comparison to look at. If Nasir finds the Idol, you know, is he going to hold out all season and play a similar game to Tai? Hold those Idols all the way till the end. Going to be very interesting. Heather and Sydney having a major fight. That'll be interesting to see how that plays out, especially given that alliance forming early on here on the Luvu tribe. Over on... Uwa, no one has found the idol, nothing to report here, but on Yasa, okay, again, that tribal alliance between Tiffany and Xander still standing, the test will be how it plays out at Tribal Council. Going ahead to Tribal Council, Jeff Probst will read the votes, first vote going toward Liana, second vote, Evie, Evie, that's two votes Evie, one vote Liana, Evie getting a third vote, and it looks like, no, Liana, Okay, drawing it up at three, two, three votes Evie, two votes Liana, and the final vote goes towards Liana, so we've got ourselves a tie. Really fascinating. So on the revote, let's see how this goes. First vote Liana, second vote Evie, third vote goes to Liana, so Liana only needs one more vote and she's going home, and it looks like we are going. Wow, we've got a tie, 2-2 two, two between Evie and Liana. So what happens here is someone draws a purple rock and it will be David Avocci, my preseason pick right there. I said he'd be similar to David Sampson and it looks like, I mean, obviously not going out in the same fashion as David Sampson, but wow, first boot David Avocci. That is fascinating to see. Let's see how each castaway voted. David voting for Liana, Eric voting for Liana. Evie voting for Liana. So we did see those three really stick together. Liana drifting towards that relationship between Tiffany and Xander. Liana and Xander being a similar age, it makes sense. Uh, those three voting towards Evie. So David already gone. Crazy to see a, a rock in the first episode. And wouldn't that be a crazy premiere episode for Survivor 41? After 18 months without Survivor in our televisions, seeing someone get rocked out in the first episode would be just insane. Okay, let's jump into this second episode. Obviously, Yasa there, down to five members, and proceeding to the Luvu Tribe Alliance. Okay, that alliance still stands between Danny, Deshawn, Heather, and Sydney. On the Ua Tribe, again, still the same things happening there. And on Yasa, okay, so we've got Eric and Abby, yep, still holding their alliance, and Tiffany and Xander as well still aligned. Liana, again, playing that sort of middle role. Will she align herself with Eric and Evie after they cast votes toward her in the previous Tribal Council? Who knows? At the Immunity Challenge, okay, again. Wow, Yasa are going to go back to Tribal Council for the second time in a row. I said they'd be a train wreck. Ua win an immunity. They also win a fishing kit and a boat. And Luvu also win an immunity. They win simple fishing gear. Checking out what's going on over at Luvu Tribe. As we know, Nasir has the idol. Nothing else to report there. Ricard finds the idol on the Ua Tribe and Genie becoming appreciated around camp. As I said, no surprises there. I think Genie is going to be someone that is very well loved by the cast. This season already is playing out as I'm starting to think it will. So crazy to see. I mean, the, the chances of this playing out in such a fashion, one in 
thousands. So Tiffany finds the idol on the Yasa tribe and Eric and Tiffany bond slightly. Okay, so two of the older members, not only on the tribe, but in the whole season, certainly if Eric now shifts towards that alliance of Tiffany and Xander moving away from Evie, who I would imagine got a lot of flack there, um, having three votes cast towards her, it might be a smart move for Abraham to make. Now, let's see how that plays out at Tribal Council. And okay, first vote going toward Evie. It looks like Abraham and Evie are sticking with their guns, casting two votes here for Liana. Okay, Evie gets a second vote and... Who's the tiebreaker going to be? Will it be Liana being the tiebreaker? I think she might vote for, yep, Evie. There we go. Evie, the tribe has spoken, being voted out 3-2. Yasa already down to four members. Crazy to see. And let's see how each castaway voted. As, as expected, Eric and Evie both voting for Liana. Liana, Tiffany and Xander voting for Evie. Okay, very interesting to see. On to the next episode, as mentioned... The Yasa tribe already down to four members. Let's see, the Luvu tribe alliance still remaining much the same. On the Ua tribe, again, no real changes there. And on the Yasa tribe, as, as we saw Abraham now on his own, Tiffany and Xander still aligned. Really, really interesting to see. And Yasa finally pull out immunity. They win the choice between comfort and emotional items. They choose comfort items. Luvu again winning immunity. Wow, so in this instance, we've got Ua going to Tribal Council for the first time. Let's take a look and proceed to the Luvu tribe events. As we know, Nasir has the idol. That, wow, that, that alliance, the, the strong alliance dissolving early on in the game. Very fascinating to see. I think that was going to be the dominating alliance, but to see that dissolve is fascinating. Rukard, as we know, has the idol and Chantel isolating herself from the rest of the tribe. Fascinating. No one wants to align with her. Liana isolating herself from the rest of the tribe on Yasa as well. Really, really interesting. Let's see how it plays out at Tribal Council. Ricard has the idol. He does not play the idol. First vote goes to Chantel. Second vote goes to Ricard. We know that Chantel has already isolated herself from the tribe. She gets a second vote here. Ricard getting a second vote cast towards him. Chantel, that's three votes. Chantel, two votes. Ricard and Chantel, the tribe, has spoken in a vote for to two. Let's see. Chantel obviously voting for Ricard and Brad as well voting for Ricard. We saw that alliance forming early on there. Moving into episode four. What are we going to get? Ua down to five members. Yasa still on four members and Luvu still untouched. They haven't been to tribal council. Will this be the first episode that they finally go to tribal? Let's find out. On the Luvu tribe, we know that that strong alliance has dissolved there between Danny, Deshaun, Sydney, and Heather. The alliance on Ua still standing, those four strong, and Tiffany and Se uh, Tiffany Seely and Xander Hastings still strong on the Yasa tribe. In the reward challenge, Ua wins reward, and Luvu also win reward. Ua getting a Survivor Kitchen set, Luvu getting some spices that'll surely add some flavour to their rice. Great to see there, and headed into the immunity challenge. It's Ua that win immunity once again, Luvu also win an immunity, and it means that Yasa are back to Tribal Council. They're about to lose their third number. Wow. On the Luvu tribe, we still got Nasir with the idol, as we know. On Ua, Ricard still has the idol. JD and Ricard have a major fight. Okay, and we know they're in the same alliance, so how is it going to play out when they go back to Tribal Council? Very interesting. Tiffany becoming appreciated around camp. Okay. Opposite to what I was saying before with Reem Daly. Going into Tribal Council, Tiffany has the Yasa idol. She does not play the idol. And here we go. It looks like Liana will be voted out here. Three votes to one. Liana casting a vote towards Eric Abraham. So Liana, finally, the tribe has spoken. Moving into episode five. Again, Luvu still not going to Tribal Council. And Yasa down to three members at this stage. Let's take a look and see if anything has changed on the Luvu tribe. Certainly no, no new alliances there. On the Ua tribe, that alliance still standing. And on Yasa again, Tiffany and Xander staying together. And in the immunity challenge, wow. Okay, Yasa are going to be down to two. Are Xander and Tiffany going to be our Denise and Malcolm of this season? 
this is going to be interesting to see. So Iwa winning immunity, Luvu winning immunity. Again, they are untouched at this stage. Nasir still has the idol. He bonds slightly with Erika over on Luvu. On Ua, Brad and Sarah bond slightly. Very interesting to see. And on Yasa, the tribal alliance between Tiffany and Xander dissolves. <laughs> An interesting time in the game to see that happen. But certainly, coming into tribal council, let's see if that alliance still stands and Abraham becomes the one to go. But it looks like, wow, okay, Tiffany flipping on Xander. Very, very interesting move. She's going to go ahead in the game with Abraham, uh, both Abraham and Tiffany casting their votes towards Xander. Xander voting towards Tiffany and Xander already gone. Crazy to see. And no doubt we're going to have a tribe swap coming up here, it seems, with Abraham and Tiffany. So they're down to two, which means it's going to be a twist here. Castaways are asked to select a covered buff from a tray. These contain buffs that determine their new tribe from the former Luvu tribe. Danny, Deshawn, and Erica all draw Yasser buffs. Heather, Nasir draw Luvu buffs. And Sydney joins Danny, Deshawn, and Erica on the Yasser tribe. From the former Ua tribe, it's Brad Genie on the Luvu tribe. J Ross not drawing a buff. Very interesting. He'll join the losing tribe at the next reward challenge. Ricard draws a Yasser tribe buff. Sarah draws a Luvu tribe buff. And from the former Yasa tribe, it's, okay, Eric drawing a Luvu tribe buff and Tiffany drawing a Yasa tribe buff. So let's have a look at the new tribes. On the Luvu tribe, straight away, we've got that alliance between Heather and Nasir as former Luvu members. Brad and Sarah, we saw them bond in the last episode and we know Jeannie is appreciated around the Ua camp. Abraham really on his own here as the only member of the Yasa tribe. And moving over to Yasa, we've got Danny, Deshawn, Erica, and Sydney going to be the dominating alliance there. Coming from the old Luvu, Ricard and Tiffany really working on their own. And JD is exiled. He'll come back into the game at the next reward challenge. Okay, looking at the alliances here, as we expected, Heather and Nasir having that bond from the Luvu tribe. Jeannie and Sarah, again, from the Ua tribe. Um, again, also having that relationship with Brad Reese there. And on the Yasa tribe, Ricard, a lone wolf. And we've got those four from the former Luvu tribe still having a bond. Heading into the immunity challenge, Yasa win immunity. I'm sure that's a lot of relief for Tiffany, finally. Um, she, she's only won two immunity challenges so far, so great to see she's surviving in the game. Nasir still has the idol on the Luvu tribe and is becoming appreciated around camp. Very interesting to see. Ricard has the idol, Tiffany has the idol on Yasa, and the behavior of Deshawn is rubbing the tribe the wrong way. Really interesting. I was expecting Deshawn would be a very well-liked social player, but fascinating to see that happening. Coming into Tribal Council, Nasir does not play the idol. He receives one vote against him, then one vote headed towards Sarah. Sarah, Nasir, so we've got two votes Nasir, two votes Sarah. Sarah, that's three votes Sarah. Three votes in a seer, so we've got ourselves another tie. So on the revote, what is going to happen? Nasir, Sarah, Sarah, rocks again. It's rocks again. Nasir and Sarah drawing 2-2. Two, two. Wow. Two purple rocks already. Let's see how it goes here. Okay, so who is going to draw the purple rock? It will be Heather. Heather, the tribe, has spoken. Wow. Okay. Brad, Jeannie, and Sarah all voting for Nasir. Abraham, Heather, and Nasir all voting for Sarah. Heather going out in unfortunate circumstances, joining David as the second player in this game to be voted out by drawing a rock. Insane to see this happening. Wow. Okay. Headed into the Luvu tribe, the alliance at stand. We got JD, Jeannie, and Sarah, obviously JD, coming over to this tribe. Um, Brad Reese as well, a former member of Ua. So we've got four strong former Ua members. Really interesting to see. On the Yasa tribe, it's going to be Ricard on his own again, and that Luvu tribe holding strong with Danny, Deshawn, Erica, and Sydney. Headed into the reward challenge, we know that Jairus has returned from exile. Luvu win reward, they win a survivor picnic, complete with breads, 
fruit, cold cuts, and beverages. Had an immunity challenge. Will it pay off for them? Let's have a look. And it will. They will win immunity here, which means Yasser headed to Tribal Council yet again. Let's see what happens here. Nasir having the idol on the Luvu tribe, as we know. Ricard and Tiffany have the idol on the Yasser tribe. Will those idols come into play now? We know that Ricard is the only man standing from the original Ua tribe. Tiffany, the only woman standing from the original Yasser tribe. We know that four Luvu tribe is very strong. If I was in their position, not knowing how they bonded with the, with the other castaways, obviously... I think if they're both in Lone Wolves, they might as well play their idols here. Let's see how it plays out at Tribal Council. Neither Ricard nor Tiffany play their idols. Very interesting. Deshaun getting a vote. We already know, actually, Deshaun has rubbed his tribe the wrong way. Ricard getting a vote. Will it go against Deshaun or will Ricard get his idol flushed out? Ricard, okay. Ricard, three votes for Ricard, one vote for Deshaun. So it looks like here, yep. Ricard, the tribe has spoken. Five votes to one. Okay. We are playing a Survivor Co. wrong season. Wow. I completely forgot about this. The Super Idol. <laughs> this is something that will play out in Survivor 41, obviously. I mean, as far as I know, but okay, wow. Okay. Ricard combines idols with Tiffany to make a Super Idol. Very interesting, which means that Deshaun... Is out of the game. Crazy. Okay, very interesting to be having this happen at this point in the game. And it looks like now we've got five members on the original Yasser tribe, six members on the original Luvu tribe, which means we're going to go into the merge with 11 players. And here we are, the Bulla Bulla tribe. We've got from the former Luvu tribe, it is Danny McRae, Nasir, Erica, and Sydney from the former Ua tribe, we've got Brad Reese, Jeannie Chen, JD Robinson, Ricard Boy, and Sarah Wilson. And from the original Yasa tribe, it's going to be Eric Abraham and Tiffany Seely. The alliances, let's see how they play out. Okay, so we've got the Ua tribe alliance of Jeannie, Jairus, Ricard, and Sarah. Again, Brad Reese, another member of that alliance. He originally aligned himself with Chantel. So he finds himself a little bit on the outs, but I'm sure he can work his way in. Towing that line of Ua strong, still with five members, uh, certainly compared to the original Luvu tribe, we only have four members remaining with Danny, Erica, Nasir, and Sydney. They hold the numbers there. But I think the key vote here will be with the original Yasser tribe of Eric and Tiffany. Do they flip? Where do they go? Going to be really fascinating to see. Those new tribes, not really as strong as the initial tribes and in the immunity challenge okay eric abraham wins the challenge standing up on a porch and balancing balls they're a, a great classic immunity challenge uh they're a, an endurance challenge eric winning that immunity going to be interesting again tiffany now on the outs is the only yasa member vulnerable she's combined her idol in the last episode with ricard so how does that play out now? Uh, is she bonded with the original Ua tribe, potentially? This is going to be interesting to see. The tribe events. Nasir, as we know, has the idol. The behavior of Sydney is rubbing the tribe the wrong way. Is this going to be cause to keep Ua strong and get rid of one of the Luvu members? Let's see at Tribal Council. All right. Nasir does not play the idol. First vote goes towards Ricard. Second vote goes towards Erica. Erica, Erica, three votes to Erica, one vote to Ricard, okay, Ricard, so that's 3-2, three, we're tied, 3-3, three, three. Ricard, four votes Ricard, three votes Erica, four votes Erica, four votes Ricard, that's five for Erica, we got a tie, 5-5, five, five. it's going to be down to the deciding vote. Let's see who is voted out. It is Ricard. Ricard, the tribe has spoken, voted out six to five. Okay, did the Ua tribe flip on him? Let's see. No, okay, so Brad, Jeannie, Jairus, Ricard, and Sarah. Okay, so the Ua tribe stuck strong, but it was the Yasser tribe, Tiffany, and 
Eric Abraham that voted towards Ricard, which proved all the difference. Interesting that Tiffany would waste her idol saving Ricard, um, only to vote against him in the next episode. But anyway, who knows? We've got 10 members remaining, the alliances. We still have the four original Ua tribe members. We still got the four original Luvi tribe members. And of course, the two original Yasa tribe members in Tiffany and Eric. Doesn't look like their alliance is all that strong though. Moving on to the reward challenge. All right, we've got an ice cream feast delivered to camp Erica, Sydney, Sarah, Eric, and Danny. Win reward and head into the immunity challenge. Will that sugar rush be what they need to remain safe in the game? It won't be. Okay, Brad winning immunity in Uncomfortably Numb, a classic challenge. Holding his hands over his head, standing on a narrow perch for hours on end, excruciating, and the cattle rancher pulls it out. Back at camp, Nasir has the idol, and the Ua tribe alliance dissolves. Okay, so potentially losing Ricard was the final nail in the coffin here for Ua. Headed into tribal council, let's see how it goes. Will Yasa and Luvu remain united? Sydney receives two votes. We know that, yes, she has alienated some of the camp, rubbing them the wrong way in the previous episode. So two votes for Sydney, one vote for Sarah. Sarah, that's 2-2. Two, two. Three votes Sydney, two votes Sarah. Sydney, Sydney, Sarah. Okay. And yeah, it looks like Sydney has been voted out. Seven votes to three. Let's see how each castaway voted. Brad, Eric, Jeannie, Jairus, Nasir flipping on the original Luvu tribe. Interesting. Sarah and Tiffany. Okay. Wow. So it was Nasir that flipped on the original Luvu tribe. Otherwise, everyone that voted for Sydney were Ua and Yasa members. Fascinating to see. Wow. Nasir sort of playing a free agent game. Interesting. Okay. Let's see how the alliances shake out. Again. Okay. We still got the Ua tribe. Brad, Jeannie, and Sarah. Uh, Jairus as well, a part of that. The original Luvu alliance of Danny, Erica, and Nasir. Although it looks like after Nasir flipped, he's going to be drifting away. He's still got his idol, which might play in his favour. Eric and Tiffany as well from the original Yasa tribe. Headed into the reward challenge. Let's see how things play out. Tiffany, Eric, Erica, and Nasir win reward. They win Chinese takeout delivered to camp. And Tiffany and Eric, obviously the original Yasa tribe, they already have an alliance built in. Erica and Nasir both voted together against Sydney in the last episode. So are they going to try and work Nasir here and try and bring them over to their side? Let's see. In the immunity challenge, it will be Genie that wins immunity. Great to see. Okay, and this is the domino challenge where you have to climb through that sort of horizontal ladder and stack your dominoes. Get them going long enough and then to hit the gong at the end. Genie pulling out that immunity challenge. A great challenge. I'd love to see that come back in Survivor 41. Nasir, as we know, has the idol. Erica and Eric have a major fight. Maybe that's about who um, who, who has the better name. Who knows there. Um, but interesting given that those two have voted together throughout the merge. Headed into Tribal Council. Erica's going to get some attention paid towards her. She receives... Two votes, Sarah gets one vote. It's three votes, Erica, one vote, Sarah. Three, two, Erica. Okay, three each for Erica and Sarah. Erica, that's four votes. Erica, five votes, which means Erica, the tribe has spoken, voted out six votes to three. Sarah receiving three votes. It looks like from the original Luvu Alliance. No, okay, Danny, Erica, and Nasir. All voting for Sarah. So, very interesting there. The Ua tribe basically flipping on Erica. Um, Yasa as well flipping on Erica. So, it seems they took Eric's side in that argument there. Fascinating to see. Proceeding to the next episode. We've got eight players remaining headed into episode 11. And having a look at the alliances, it's still the four original Ua tribe members. Brad Reese, Jeannie Chen, JD Robinson, and Sarah Wilson. The two Luvu tribe members being Danny and Nasir. And from Yasa, it's Eric, Abraham, and Tiffany Seely. 
head into the reward challenge. Eric wins reward. Eric is emerging as a challenge threat. He's, this is his second reward win, I believe now. He's also won that first immunity challenge as well. He wins a bacon cheeseburger with french fries, beer, and chocolate chip cookies. Okay, so it looks like there's three different winners in this challenge where the castaways will be categorized based on which type of reward they chose. Okay, so Eric wins the food category. Brad wins a letter from home. And Danny wins a secret extra vote. Let's see how that'll come into play. Obviously, we know that the Yasa, uh, the, the Luvu tribe are kind of on the outs here. Will that play into this next tribal council? Potentially, because Eric again, as I said, Eric now two immunity wins, two reward wins, another immunity win. That's going to be great for his game. I think people are going to start pointing fingers towards him. Very interesting. Nasir still has the idol. And uh, the new Yasser tribe alliance dissolves between Danny and Tiffany. Okay, that wasn't really a factor in the first place anyway. Uh, so we can ignore that. And okay, Nasir is going to play the idol here. Danny does not use the extra vote. So let's see how this shakes out. Nasir negates two votes, three votes, four votes, five votes. Nasir does not count. Okay, this could be a Wentworth situation here. Brad Reese, Sarah. Wow, okay. So Nasir negates five votes. Brad receives one vote, and Sarah is voted out with two votes against her. So it looks like there is a vote split here between Danny and Nasir voting for Sarah and Eric voting for Brad. Okay, interesting to see. Um, Brad, Jeannie, and Jairus as part of that original Iwa tribe alongside Sarah all voting for Nasir and Tiffany voting with them as well. So it looks like Eric has now drifted towards the original Luvu tribe members in Nasir and Danny. Heading into this next episode, we know that Nasir has played his idol now, so there's no idols left in the game, but Danny has his extra votes still. This is going to be interesting. The tribal alliances, again, we got Brad, Jeannie, and Jairus, um, Sarah as well from the original Iwa tribe. And from the original Luvu tribe, it's Danny and Nasir. Eric and Tiffany, we haven't really seen them been working at this new merge phase of the game anyway, but they're still standing from the original Yasser tribe. Crazy to see those two remaining after, you know, basically being the only two left in their tribe in the pre-merge phase of the game. Heading into the reward challenge, let's see how it goes. Will Eric win again? Eric wins again. <laughs> Eric, three reward wins now, two immunity wins. He is unstoppable, surely, surely. There's got to be some resistance building against him. Interesting. So they win a helicopter tour of the island, followed by a picnic lunch, and Eric and Jeannie take Tiffany along with them. So is Eric going to potentially try and flip Tiffany and Jeannie to come over with the original Luvu tribe members? Can they create a majority there using Danny's extra vote? It's going to be interesting to see in the immunity challenge. Nasir wins immunity, so that bodes well for Luvu. It means that Danny is vulnerable. Eric is vulnerable as well. We know he's obviously won a couple of challenges, so maybe that'll start to build against him. Headed to the tribe events. Okay, we got a new alliance built in. Brad Reese, Eric Abraham, Jeannie, Jairus, and Nasir. That 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 alliance has dissolved. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Um but yeah, Eric really starting to get some resistance against him potentially. Heading to Tribal Council, Danny plays the extra vote and will vote twice. So that's two votes for Brad, three votes for Brad, four votes for Brad, Tiffany, Tiffany. Has Eric flipped on Tiffany? Tiffany, five votes Brad, three votes Tiffany. So Brad is out of the game now. I suspect, so Danny has voted for Brad, Eric has voted for Brad, Nasir, Tiffany, okay, and Danny. So Tiffany was brought into that alliance at the reward challenge. Eric really worked on her, bringing, re reuniting those two, but um, okay. And, and the original Luvu tribe basically standing with Eric and Tiffany, and the Ua tribe being decimated here, losing Brad. So the original Ua tribe, if I'm correct, are now down to only two. Okay, so heading into the final six phase of the game, we got Danny and Nasir from the Luvu tribe. Eric and Tiffany from the Yasser tribe, and it's Genie and Jairus still standing from the Ua tribe. So 2-2-2, two, two, two. this is going to be interesting to see what happens in the endgame. But as we know, Eric is aligned with Nasir and Danny, 
and Tiffany has sort of drifted back towards that side. So will they pick off the Ua tribe members here? This is going to be interesting. Head into the reward challenge. <laughs> Eric again. He wins reward. They win a picnic and an animal sanctuary with a tour of the premises. So Eric Nasir and JD win in reward. Eric Nasir as an alliance. Um, does Jairus be drawn towards this alliance? And do they just get rid of Genie as the easy vote? Unanimously in the next vote? Going to be interesting. Or will Genie win immunity again? No, she won't. It'll be Danny McRae, the former NFL player, finally living up to the expectations. He wins reward. Um... The contestants must stack blocks in a tower on a wobbly platform that had to pull the rope. Okay, so this is when you have to spell out the word immunity and win immunity, essentially. And, and Danny does that. Okay, great to see. Interesting that he compared himself to Ben Dreebergen in the preseason. And I think Ben Dreebergen actually... No, he didn't win this challenge um, because he, he put an upside down U. I believe that was the final challenge, actually, in Survivor Heroes vs. Healers vs. Hustlers. But anyway, Danny is safe. So now Nasir and Eric... On that Luvu alliance. Tiffany, will she vote with them? Danny is becoming appreciated around camp. Heading into tribal council. Eric, one vote. Jairus, one vote. Eric, okay. Potentially that strength in the challenges is going to catch up to Eric. Okay, two votes Jairus, two votes Eric. That's three votes Jairus, two votes Eric, which means one vote remaining. Jairus, the tribe has spoken, so it looks like Jairus and Genie voted together. Yes, they did. They voted for Eric. Everyone else, the original Luvu and Yasa, voting for Jairus. Okay, so JD out of the game at this stage. Episode 14, the final five. Things are really, really starting to heat up here. And we've still got the two original Luvu members in Danny and Nasir, the two original Yasa members in Eric and Tiffany, and Genie really standing on her own at this phase of the game. Nasir wins reward. He wins an overnight trip to a survivor spa with a meal of chicken, beef, and cheesecake. He shares the reward with Eric and Tiffany. So wanting to keep that Yasa tribe aligned with Luvu, a great move on his part to bring them in, um, assuming that he has a strong alliance already existing with uh, with Danny, um, between Danny and Nasir, that original Luvu tribe. Nasir wins immunity. So Nasir, really, wow, doing a great job with these challenges. Proceeding to the tribal events, Danny isolates himself from the rest of the tribe. Okay, no one wants to align with him, so do we see that the original Luvu Alliance um, this year flips on him and brings potentially Tiffany and Eric with him. Is Genie saved in this instance? It doesn't look like it, though. Eric receives one vote, Genie receiving two votes. Okay, I stand corrected. Two votes Eric, two votes Genie, and... The next person voted out of the game will be Genie. Genie voted out three votes to two. So who is Genie aligned with here? Genie is aligned with Danny. Okay, so Danny being on the outs has aligned with Genie to vote for Eric, but Eric, Nasir, and Tiffany all voting for Genie, keeping that Yasa tribe strong. Fair enough, and they, and they did go on the reward challenge as well, so that makes sense. The final four of the game. So we've got two Luvu and two Yasa now. This is going to be interesting to see how it plays out. And even on the new tribes, uh, after the tribe swap, Tiffany and Danny were together and Eric and Nasir were together. So some interesting relationships here. We know that Nasir, Eric and Tiffany are close based on that last reward challenge. So what happens here? Eric wins reward. Again, I've been saying it all along. Eric is so strong at these challenges, it seems. Wow, he wins a meal consisting of steak vegetables, a protein bar, and refreshing drinks. Eric has the option to share reward with one other castaways. He shares the reward with Danny. Interesting. Danny has completely isolated himself from the rest of the tribe. So what is Eric's MO here? Does he see Nasir as being a big threat? Does he want Danny on his side to get rid of Nasir? This is going to be interesting. But certainly it all comes down to the immunity challenge. Nasir has won a couple of challenges now. Eric's won a couple of challenges. Danny has won a challenge. Maybe Tiffany wins her first challenge here. Let's see. Nasir wins immunity again. Okay. So it looks like potentially the runs on the wall for Danny. Could it be? Eric and Tiffany voting together from the original Yasa. Or does Nasir try and force a tie here? Heading into tribal council. No. Okay. Wow. This is a really interesting final four vote. <laughs> first vote goes towards Eric. Second vote goes towards Danny. The third vote goes towards Tiffany, 
and the fourth vote going towards Danny. So Danny is out of the game now. Nasir, I assume it's Nasir and Danny split their votes. Or we'll probably do that at Final Four. I don't know. The mind boggles. But anyway, we got the Yasser 2. Amazingly, they were the last members standing on their tribe, and now they've rode it all the way out to the final three. This is insane. So we've got a final three now of Eric, Nasir, and Tiffany. As we're running this off Survivor Co. Wrong, there will be a final reward challenge here where we have someone voted off the jury. So in this instance, Eric wins that reward. He wins the ability to remove one person from the jury. Will he maybe remove someone like a Danny who we just blindsided? No significant events occurred back at camp. Proceed to tribal council. Eric votes for Jairus. Okay, so Jairus is voted off the jury, which means now that we'll have a seven-person jury of Ricard, Sydney, Erica, Sarah, Brad Reese, Jeannie Chen, and Danny McRae. So we know that Nasir has Sydney, Erica, and Danny as original Luvu members. Obviously, Eric and Tiffany on their own as the only Yasser members, um, Ricard, Sarah, Brad, and Jeannie being Ua members originally. So it's going to be interesting to see how that sort of plays out because it looks like the the weight of the jury might stand with Ua. Heading into Tribal Council, I think Eric probably has the upside here. He's won a lot of challenges. He's certainly played that role playing the middle in this game. So will that translate? Otherwise, Nasir also, he seems like he's been a likable character. Um, he's certainly overcome the odds playing the idol, negating those five votes earlier in the game. But even Tiffany, again, would have come into the game underestimated, potentially the first boot, um, being one of the older members of the game and also an older woman who traditionally get targeted. Does she have a story to tell? Being on the Asa tribe and climbing her way through the ranks. Also, we know that she worked with the Ua tribe for a long time there before finally flipping back to work with Eric. So let's go ahead to the final tribal council and this is going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. Eric, Nasir and Tiffany face the jury, so we're headed towards the reunion show. Who is going to win? If I'm going to guess, it's going to be Eric Abraham, but let's have a look here. Headed into the reunion, it is... Going to keep us waiting. <laughs> Eric wins by a vote of 5 2 0. So, as I thought, let's see how each juror voted. I'm assuming the C got two votes and Tiffany potentially being the zero vote finalist. No, okay. So, Ricard, Sydney, Erica, Brad, and Danny all voted for Eric. Sarah and Jeannie voted for Tiffany to win. Who will be the fan favourite? I'm thinking maybe a Jeannie. Maybe someone like Nasir. Let's see. The fan favorite will be Erica Kostubinen. Okay, interesting. Maybe using her communications degree to, to to get those votes cast towards her. Very interesting. Congratulations to Erica. And looking at the statistics, Eric obviously the winner. And we see obviously David rocked out in that first vote. Um, as I said before, my comparison to David Sampson might ring true here. Um, he's rocked out in the first vote, goes home first. Evie voted out second, Chantel voted out third, Liana voted out fourth, and Xander voted out just before the jury as a casualty, Tiffany flipping on her at that stage of the game, shocking to see. And the Yasser tribe, uh, the, the Yasser two of Eric and Tiffany really just rallied from here. Headed into the merge, we had that first vote where Heather was rocked out of the game um, in a tied vote. Fascinating to see. Sorry, that was pre-jury rather. Um, Deshaun also voted out pre-jury. Okay. And Ricard, the first vote out on the jury, um, also playing as the first juror, the second juror, Sydney Scale, the third juror, Erica Kaspunin, the fourth juror, Sarah Wilson, the fifth juror, um, Brad Race. Sarah was voted out after Nassir negated five votes. Jairus was taken off the jury after being voted out of the jury by Eric, Jeannie also on the jury, and Danny falling at the final four. Eric, as we know, defeating Tiffany and Nasir in a 5-2-0 vote. So there we have it, Survivor 41. There's our Brant Steel, and I'm going to pop a link in the description down below if you want to check that out, um, and you can watch it play out for yourself, have another look at it. But going ahead to Survivor 41, it's going to be 
a monster of a season, as we know. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that all plays out. Um, certainly stay tuned to my channel because I'll have plenty more Survivor 41 content coming out. I'll be doing recaps after each and every episode. I'll be, you know, doing power rankings, all that fun stuff. So if you haven't already, please feel free to give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel for all the fixings. As I said, there'll be plenty more Survivor 41 content in the coming weeks and months with recaps of each and every episode as the season progresses. Also stay tuned because I'll have plenty more content regarding international Survivor over the coming weeks. Now that Australian Survivor Brains vs Brawn is about to finish and also Survivor South Africa, Amenity Island is about to finish. Next week as well, Sandra Diaz Twine, her journey to the sole Survivor on Survivor Heroes vs Villains as well. That'll be up coming next week. But there you have it, Survivor 41. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Um, you know, always like reading all your comments and understanding what you guys are thinking. Let me know who your winner pick is. As I said, my winner pick is probably Ricard at this stage. Although, based off my Brent Steel simulation, if that rings true, it might be Eric Abraham that is winning the game. Uh, wouldn't that be great to see? I'm really looking forward to Survivor 41 coming back on September 22nd. A monster is lurking. There's no knowing when it will come back to get you. Grab your torch, head back to camp. Good night.